This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so we have uh, October 1st, and we are studying Ephesians 4, 25. At least we'll start there. We might get to 26. I don't know. And um, who would like to open this up in a word of prayer? we got a small room at the moment, guys, so step forward. Mark? Let's pray. Our great mighty Father in heaven, we bow before you and, and humble ourselves in your presence to, because we want to learn. We want to learn from you and from your word. And so we're asking that you teach us. We know it's your, your, it's, it's an honor to you to, and a um, privilege to us. <laughs> I should say we, we thank you for the privilege you've given us to receive from your hand. And um, we ask that we may be able to, to reflect that honor back to you as we learn from you. And thank you. Amen. 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 I've got a praise request. Yes. A praise, wait, wait. A prayer request or a praise report? Pray. Praise report. Sorry. There you go. Go ahead. Um. Obviously, I, I've told you that we'd had the coronavirus in our family over the past week or so. And um, everyone had got it and it had come and gone and passed and not really bothered anyone. But my youngest son, Rocco, who was eight, he, he'd been all right, and he, he got up about 3 o'clock in the morning. He, he couldn't breathe at all. He was suffocating, and he was choking, and um, his eyes were running, and his, his eyes were coming, his eyes were sticking out of his head. So we, we had to put him in car, and we took him to hospital. Um, when we got him to the hospital, they sent us straight into a ward. They put him straight in a – they give him a room, and they give him a bed straight away, um, and he was struggling to breathe. And I, well, I held his hand and I was talking to him and I was praying over him. And I asked him, I asked him, does he know that Jesus loves him? And he said, yeah, he knows Jesus loves him. And I said, do you think that Jesus wants you to be afraid? And he said, no. So I said, so don't be afraid and you'll be all right. And that's, this is before any doctors did anything he, um, or anyone had done anything. And he just started breathing again like properly and he calmed down and he went to sleep and then he was all right and when i checked him there was no sign of any stress of any anything they were like why are you here sort of thing and um then they just then we just went home pretty much so yeah so just all praise to jesus and the father amen i i cannot imagine anyone who has the influence of Anthony, Scarlett, Indiana, and Marcel not knowing that Jesus loves them. Thank you. Caller one, who is a uh, caller one today? All right, so we'll have it silent, not a problem. You are welcome to, to the call. Always look forward to you, uh, to anyone enjoying the call. All right, so what was the question that I asked um, this week? Anybody have that? Yes, I have it. Boniface. Okay, the question was, for Ephesians 4, 25, what mm -hmm. is necessary in order for truth to be spoken? Mm. And anybody have an answer to that question? Looking at verse 25, Ephesians 4.25, the answer is right in the verse. What's that? My response would be to stop telling lies. Yeah. If we're going to... Uh, be people of truth, then we have to stop lying. Who is the Amen. number one? Who is the number one person that we lie to when we lie? What was that, Wayne? 
yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Kind of close to the answer. So, so Wayne said yourself, and it's kind of close to the answer that I was going to give and say those closest to you. But... And I can't think of too many people closer to yourself than yourself. <laughs> All right. the dog your heart. What's that, Anthony? You're sealing up the door to your heart by lying. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. God doesn't ask us things or speak to us or ask us to confess because he doesn't know what we've done. He, he already knows. And I, I did quite an in-depth study into the word faith the other day. And mm -hmm. when you look at faith, it's basically a recipe for loyalty to God. And it's in, in, in the word itself, in its own context. And you realize that honesty is, is the greatest key for that, that when what you are saying is what God has seen, then you're telling him the truth. And then he can, he can build on that. He can work with that because he gave, you that, he gave you that truth. It's the truth when you're in Jesus Christ. Everything that's revealed through him is the truth. There's no lying in him. The lying's in ourselves, and we have to cast that out. Amen. All right, let's step forward into the who, what, where, when, why of it all. What do we have for who in Ephesians 4.25? Uh, can somebody read Ephesians 4.25 out of KJV? Indiana's got it. Go ahead, Indiana. Therefore, putting away, lying, speak every man truth to his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Amen. Amen. Yeah. All right. Let's dig into the who. Okay, we're going to dig in very quietly, apparently. A wherefore. Wherefore. Okay, why is wherefore a who? Because that's what's putting away the lion. That's us. Because mm. the wherefore is Kyle. Is Kyle on today? I don't see him yet. Well, as Wait Kyle would say, call, call her two. Who's call her two? Vicky, your sister. Vicky, my sister. <laughs> That's an interesting last name. Where did you get that last name? All right. Oh, so, <laughs> all right. So we are on Ephesians four twenty-five. Um. All right. Yeah, um. Go ahead. As a I was going to say, as Brother Kyle would say, wherefore has got a number all on its own. And well, there you go. it's bringing into play um, everything from the previous verse, which is basically talking about has been renewed in the spirit of your mind and that ye is talking about ye. And we are the ye, the wherefore the ye puts away the lying speak in, in order to be renewed. And it reveals that the previous verse is very focused on, this, on the lying. Amen. All right. Anybody else have any who's here? Man. Man is definitely a, a, a who. Absolutely. 100%. Um, anybody? And then I, uh, along with the wherefore, you did mention a couple others there, Anthony. Anybody else have anything else? I have like about six. Who's I can see loads. What? Members. Indiana one. Members, yeah, uh, I heard member. that. I heard that, and, absolutely. And, one at a time. And, and what? Heels, neighbor. He, a neighbor, and then what was the other one, Wayne? His. His, 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 yes. And in this sense, this verse, one could be a who as well. One and then another. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. Go on, man. So, <laughs> this is a who verse. Can you just a second? Wayne, go ahead and talk and just say something. Hello, everyone. Okay. Can you hear him uh, from there? It needs to be a bit louder. Okay. So, I'm going to have to hand the mic to you when during that time. Not a problem. Uh, I've got a sneaky one. What's. We can do that too. All right. What was that? I've got a sneaky who. Uh oh. I can't imagine you, Anthony. 
All right, well, go ahead. If, if we think about the previous verses, it said that put off conversation with the old man, yeah? It says mm -hmm. put off. We're focusing on the put from that verse, and it says put away lying. So lying is a who because that's the conversation. That's the old man, the liar. Very good point. Very good point. Anyone else? It's definitely a who. Have we covered both every man and his neighbor? Have we covered both of those? So I'm thinking his neighbor. That makes me think of a question that that um, Jesus was asked. Uh, who is my neighbor? Absolutely. Amen. Hey, All right, let's go to. He's got, he's, I mean, obviously we're neighbors to one another, but is God not our neighbor in heaven? Because we're all resident on earth, and He's our neighbor in heaven. And when you speak the truth, we really do need to speak the truth to God, because people they lie to themselves and they think they can lie to God. I can say it's slightly different. You know, if we're in the body of Christ, mm. and if we're in the Father's house, who's his neighbor? Dead. Neighbor in Satan. Neighbors. Satan's his neighbor. So if we've got to speak the truth to Satan and confront him, I'd say that as another way. Is that not like that verse where Paul says if um, a couple of people comes to somebody who's not necessarily acting in concordance with the body of Christ that are somebody or somebody within the church that they yeah, come to one and then they come in multiples and confront them so that they, he can see that everybody else is representing of one mind and their mind difference from the uh, the other mind, and therefore, are we also not doing that to Satan? As he's just said, I never thought about it like that. But is he not right? What he's saying that when we all stand in one mind for one thing, that he, I wouldn't like to say what he'd do or how he'd take that, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I get his point. Um, have we said yeah, we? Have we, we said we? We did say we. I think I've we got did. another one. All right. Putting. Because when we come to Christ, it's Christ that's putting everything away because we do nothing and he does all the works in us. So he's doing the putting away. But we're allowing him by opening the door to our hearts. He circumcises our hearts and he steps straight in. And he puts away the lying speak because when we're in him, he takes... He takes everything. He takes the responsibility for us, and he he does everything that we that we couldn't do before. Why couldn't we do it before? Why were we? Why are we all sinners? Why are we all wretched people? Why, why all these questions are all answered by Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. Let's go to a what? I didn't hear that. Scarlet. Members. Members. Yeah. What are we? We are members. Very good. Um, I hear talking in the way background. Shout. Truth. Truth is a lot, I think. What's that? Oh. Indiana, speak up. Pick it up. Truth. Um, I think. Truth is what? Yeah, because that's what you're speaking. Okay. Oh, Scarlett's got another one. She's, a, she's on a roll today. Yeah. Lying. Lying is a what that we want to avoid in order that we speak truth. Oh, Scarlett. <laughs> anyone else? Let, let's, let's bring other people into this. Um, anyone yeah. else be a what? Well, it's mentioning no more pre -camp. No more pretense. Okay, where, where is that? The very first uh, of the uh, Okay, so you're are you using NIV? No, New King James version. Okay, okay, um, yeah, putting away lying. No more pretense. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. So that's that's getting that's a what area and any other what speak that's one that I saw um, I don't yeah. know if it, here just meant yeah. speak 
Speak would definitely be a what? Definitely be a what? Hmm? With his well, neighbor. Yeah. What's that? With his neighbor, would that be one? With his neighbor. So what are, what are we doing? We're speaking truth with what? With his neighbor. Truth is a what? What are we speaking? Speaking yep. the truth. Absolutely. Well, the other thing I see, it mentions lying, but it also reiterates it by saying lying to self. So I would also see that as a what? Mm -hmm. Yep. We, we, have, we, uh, we covered this a little bit earlier, but when we lie, who is the biggest person we're lying to? Well, the, uh, who is one of the, who is the most, hmm, who are we lying to more than anybody else when we lie? Ourselves. So Absolutely. look at this. Wow. Think about this. The, 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 the two, the context in the previous verses was put away the old man and put on the new man. So no more being the new man, no more listening to the old man, but we need to tell him the truth. Mm. The, the yep. new man needs to, needs to be t speaking every man truth with his neighbor. So every man, so this is the old man and the new man. The new man needs to be speaking the truth to the old man because we are members one of another and we don't need to be listening to the old man, but we need to be preaching the gospel to him we need to be there's a verse that's talking about looking after your body looking after your your flesh and like being good to him and like if you can I don't know if you can if you maybe can recall which verses i can't quite i think it's corinthians i think um and he's talking about being good to your bodies even though there's like this sort of animosity between the two and like between the flesh and the spirit um that we still need to to do that because we we don't want to die prematurely for no reason whatsoever we're supposed to cherish that life what god's given us even in this mortal body amen so is it all right if i couple a few what's together sure. so i see the the speak as the verb form of what here okay and then lying versus truth as being a contrast so so it's kind of hinging around speak which kind of in, in envelops this whole idea of communication so um communication is a big part of our existence and in fact that's you know what we're doing with our bible study here mm -hmm. but um God is communicating with us through the word of God, right? Through the Bible. And so in a sense, that is the ultimate speaking truth. And so when we're passing around all our own theories and ideas that are not, don't have anything to do with that, really that could fit into that contrast of lying, even though we're not intending it to mean lie. But, but um, when when it doesn't come from the source of truth and we're we're just our own ideas, it could be. Vicky? I think the other thing that I see there, because it's so pronounced that it's mentioning in Christ's body. And the thing that, that brings that that is coming to me with that is we're connected to Christ very much like what was just said. We're connected to Christ, and therefore we're responsible to uphold one another and tell them, you know, as, as the truth is mentioned there. So are we open enough to hear when a fellow brother or sister kind of walks up to us in love and says, you know, and 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 are, are we open to hear criticism if you, I, I don't know if that's really the word you want to use there, but so that they can help us. And we together keep walking the road that, I mean, because it's easy, it, we can fall off. And so as the body is able to exhort each other, they can also help correct each other so that together we're walking the path we need to be walking. 
And isn't yeah, and that's so true. That's exactly what we are called to do. Let's go to aware. I've got one more thing, if that's all right. Well, all right, Anthony. You see, if we say we're speaking now about people that are in the body of the Christ, in the body of Christ, and we're talking about there's a bit of edification, well, not a bit, there's edification going on here, as in for we are members one of another, and speak of the truth of his neighbor. So this is, we're talking about the bigger picture. We're talking about the whole group, the whole body of Christ. So if we're talking, if we're talking directly now to people in the body of Christ, and it's saying, wherefore, put away lying. What's the greatest lie that anybody can do that has heard of Jesus Christ and that's heard and been taught by him? And to me, that will be stay silent. Because mm. that will be lying. That would mean that we're going out into the world in their own journey and being ashamed of Christ and not speaking the truth because yeah. they've just gone back to their everyday life. It's, it's studies finished. The group meeting's finished. They've shook the, they've clapped their hands, they've shouted hallelujah, but the next day they've just left Christ in the building and therefore we have the erection of these churches and temples of stone and we are not a heart of stone, we're a heart of flesh. And that's where the church is, in the heart of flesh. So therefore, we need to be speaking the truth to everybody. We need to be telling everyone about Jesus. We need to be telling everyone the truth. Otherwise, by being silent, we are lying. It's like Daniel in Daniel 1. If he had stayed silent, how many people would have died? If he hadn't have said, I can interpret the dream, God will make it readily available for me to interpret the dream if I ask him. I have faith, I can do this. How many people would have died if Daniel had not stood up, if Daniel had held his peace. But you see, Daniel understood that he was breaking the Ten Commandments by holding his peace, by being silent, would have made him directly responsible for the deaths of the Chaldeans and the other advisors and also the eunuch at the time. But by speaking not to, up... Not to mention himself. Exactly, not, not to mention him. I think at that moment he wasn't even included in, in that himself because he wasn't an advisor at that point. And he says... Um, that basically, by doing that, he loved his neighbor, the eunuch. He loved his enemies, the Chaldeans and the King Nebuchadnezzar at the time, who just captured him. And by doing that, and by being so submissive to the Ten Commandments on that level, he demonstrated that with all his heart and soul, he loved God above absolutely everything and served God in the presence of his enemies. And in a place where most people, if you took them and put them, they would definitely want to keep their mouth shut in fear of their life, whereas he didn't have fear over his life because Amen. it was in God's, in God's hands, under God's wings. Amen. 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 Wayne? Yeah, I was just, I would like to read my foots in here. There's only one word that's not going to be foot when I read it, and that word is of. But I just want to read the verse like this, and these are these are my what's or the what's that I see. Putting away lying, speak every truth, neighbor, members, one of another. All of those are my what's except for the of. Mm. Why not the and of? I'm just curious. Preposition. I it oh, fair enough. I just had okay. to bridge it together. I put the of and now to bridge it together. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, let's go to where. So where is this all taking place? With his neighbor? Neighbor is definitely one of them. Wherefore, putting away lying. Is where where? Putting something away. Putting away lying is aware. Um, wherefore. Help me with that. It's born indeed. Wherefore um, is because, is because well, first of all, it starts with where straight away because that kind of gives it away. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, where we are is where, well, where, wherever we are, we are, but we're putting away lying. So, what? oh, I know, we're putting away the lying from ourselves. So, where is the lying in us? I'm getting rid of it. We're putting away. Sense. 
All right, is there any other where? Monster Alec. I've got a where, but I'm not entirely sure about it. Would truth be aware? Okay, is, let's talk about it. Is truth aware? Right? It's like, like truth, like who exactly is the truth? It's, it's Jesus Christ. And where is he? And where is he? He's in the body of Christ and he's in you. Yeah, he's in you. Yes. I definitely see where you're coming from there, but um, I see it as, I can see that as aware too, because if you're not operating in the sphere of lying, then what sphere, where are you? You're in truth. And who's truth? Christ's truth. But um, you're, you're, you're in that sphere of truth, so that I definitely can see where that would be aware. Anyone else? Uh, I'm looking at Christ's body. Where, where are we talking about is Christ's body? Members of one another. Yeah. 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 Hey, man. That, that's, that's at least as long as you do things my way. If you get out of line and do things the wrong way, well, then, then we're no longer members of one another because you're not doing it my way. That's the way it should be approached, right? Yeah. Well, then that, that gives us then yeah. an opportunity to correct you in the wrong mindset at this point. No, I, I get your point. I get your point. But, and I know I was teasing, but how often do we really operate out of that parameter? Where well, is even one, more, go ahead. Even more <laughs> with that, how, how often do we think even do the same thing with Christ when Christ wants to direct us and we think that we're right? Very, very good point. Very good point. It's a habit we've got to break, absolutely. Because it's something that we do have to pray about, we have to confess that as, um, as like Christ, how many times does he uh, does he cast out a deaf and dumb spirit? So we have all we have all agreed that we can be there in, in what I was talking about. We all agree that it's wrong. Ultimately, based on the context of this verse, is that not lying? Say that again. We all agree that the members of one another should not be based on the fact of my rightness versus your wrongness. Amen. That's not that's not what it's about. But if I'm operating in that respect, even without saying a word, but it's my persona, my position, my how I carry myself, um, isn't that in and of itself lying? Yeah, I agree. One hundred and ten percent. Okay, so my perspective. It sounds like what you're saying then is. Lying is not just words. And they, and as they say, actions speak louder than words. So we can act out our lie. Silence can be a lie. Yeah, so, silence can be a lie. Vicki? In my perspective on what you just said, is not necessarily that we lied, but rather that we ate the apple and listened to what the enemy was saying and came in agreements with, with what the enemy is saying. So who started the lie? I, you know, many times is we, we have, again, eaten the apple. And, and sometimes I think that we're not aware that we partnered with what the enemy was saying. Until again, the body or the Lord tells us and redirects us. Amen. And when does that redirection take place? Uh, is it like, okay, well, you uh, got misdirected, so we'll see you uh, five, seven years down the road, and maybe we'll catch oh. up with you then? No, oh, it's a six month the, guarantee. No, the good. <laughs> <laughs> So what was that? Oh, he said it's a six-month guarantee. <laughs> six-month guarantee. I think you got something there, Marcel. No. Um, 
<laughs> well, the, the good shepherd goes after the lost sheep, you know. There you go. And when did he go after the lost sheep? Say that again. When did he go after the lost sheep? Straight away. Right away. What's the only thing that kept that sheep lost? It kept walking away, making it further. It kept running further away from Christ. Exactly. And if we, so when we get off track, and I've been off track myself, when we get off track, the only thing that's keeping us off track is not the father and son waiting for us to get it right. It's not, well, you, you know, you've got a 90 day probation. It's us. As soon as we come back and we come back to them, they are willing, ready, and able to receive us back instantly. We stop is, ourselves. Exactly. When, if we become like, say, say me and you don't agree, and then I'm con then I'm taking it to a level you can't. If you don't agree with me, you can't possibly be a part of the body of Christ because it doesn't agree with me. Then I'm not cutting you out of the body of Christ because I haven't got the authority to do that. All I'm actually doing is allowing temptation into me and removing myself from the body and wandering away all by myself because we should be focused on on that what we love about each other and not focusing on what we've got to bring but what other people are actually bringing. And that really does explain like what Jesus said about give up your possessions. That's your ego, your pride, your works, whatever you think you've worked out or whatever you think you understand. Just let go of that as well. Because it's easier for a camel to pass through than the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the gates of heaven. And what's the best way to do exactly what you just talked about? By keeping my eyes horizontal? Oh, uh, Wayne, I can't believe you just did that. Mark, how could you? You know, is that my the way or is it in keeping it vertical and looking to Christ, knowing we are all works in process? And that it's Amen. all a, a process that we are together as members of one another moving forward toward. Maybe Amen. because of where I've been in my life, I'm the, I, 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 I could blatantly misunderstand things and do. But because of where I, the dynamics of where I'm at in my life, that's where the father and son are working with me. So if they're in the process of working, if you saw, uh, you know, I know in the U.S. at least, we have these constructions with all these uh, vehicles and whatnot in middle of the road and whatnot. How kindly do you think they would uh, take to you slamming the brakes on in your car and getting out and starting to in instruct them because obviously they're doing it wrong. That's not going to work out so well. <laughs> so, no, that. so we, we are all works in prog process. And I, I, I'm, I'm pretty certain we're all going to agree. None of us have arrived yet. I, if, if you want to, disagree with me and now's a good time to do so, but I'm pretty sure none of us have arrived yet. So we're all work <laughs> in process. And in that process, we are learning how to become members of one another. And the way to do that is to put away line and take on truth with Christ being the ultimate truth. All right, let's go to a why. Let's go to a why. What do we have for? What was? Uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't know yeah. who that was. Um, putting away lying. Why? Because you know, it's the it's the just the thing that you're supposed to do. Um, yep. And because you know you. Want to stop lying and tell the truth with your neighbor, apparently. So, yeah. Amen. Amen. Mark? Can I use a whole prepositional phrase? Because, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes I put things together a little bit larger chunks than, but for, that word tells me it's a why. 
but it itself mm -hmm. isn't the why. It's the the rest of the prepositional phrase. So, for we are members one of another. Amen. You know what? We are we are we are family here. Mm -hmm. That's what it's saying, and that that is why. That is that is a why. <laughs> but when I go to church. I agree with you completely. And maybe it's just our church. I don't think so. When I go to church, it seems to me like we're not really acting as family as much as we should. We're acting more as if it's a church service than a hospital. We're acting more as if it's a sometimes a social club social club than it is to really dig in and get closer not only to one another but to the word of god Stabos. and i i would love to report that i don't feel that way but there's times where i absolutely do feel that way am i the only one no no way and it shouldn't you know, be that Something that I've noticed myself is that um, there's, there's that verse where it says, do not publicans greet each other so easy. How easy is it to love those who love you? Just sit there and chat to your friends and just have a discussion with your friends and people that you love and your own family and your own social group or network within the church or even within life because when Christ is talking, he isn't really talking about the buildings that we've made across on top of them. He's talking about everyday life. It's easy just to stay in your little bubble and speak to your friends, your family, those who you get on with, avoid those who you don't get on with. It's what good is there in just saluting, you know, in just saluting those that you already love. Um, and he speaks about that. And he's telling us that basically we need to go out there and love our neighbors and love our enemies as we love ourselves we need to love one another mm. not just not not just not just take the easy option and like, let's have a little bit of talk a bit of banter about christ in our little corner while we have a little starbucks worship going on we need to we need to get out there and talk to those people who say they don't want to know god amen amen Wayne? Uh, yeah, I, I just want to kind of add to what Mark said, but perhaps a little different, but yet the same. Because honestly, I see the whole verse as a why. Why putting away lying? Why? Because you need to speak. Every man needs to speak truth with his neighbor. Why? Because we are members of one another. So I see the whole verse as a why. Amen. There we go. So oh, you're not the only one that's used the whole verse that way, Marcel. <laughs> so very well, very well. All right. What about a win? What about wow. a win? You could just What's do that? the same again. I don't ruin it. <laughs> you could. You could Stop stealing. You could literally do the same thing again. When does this happen? Wherefore, put a, when we put away lying, when we speak every truth with his neighbor, when we are members one another, we are members of one another. Amen. <laughs> so breaking it down a little bit more. Amen. Is there any other wins that we see that are, I, I don't disagree with what was just said or what was said previous. But is there any other wins that uh, we see here that are a little bit more specific? Um, away. So how is away a win? It's like an action word. It's like uh, when's it happening? It's when we're putting it away. Mm. Yep. And it's uh, Wayne? In this verse, speak can be a win as well. Okay, how is that? Because every time we speak, 
since the verse is talking about putting away lying and speaking truth, every time we speak, uh, it should be the truth. Amen. So. Amen. Would you ask him to speak up a bit, please? Just okay. Put the, you, the mic closer. I said, uh, speak, uh, I see as a when, because the verse is talking about putting away lying and speaking the truth. And every time we speak, we should speak the truth. So that's a when. Every time we open our mouths, Marcel. There you go. There you go. Amen. All right. Who, uh, what else? Is there any other wins in here? With his neighbor, that's a win. You should always the speak the his truth. neighbor is a win? Because or with, you should always, with his neighbor, because you should always speak the truth when you're with your neighbor. And don't mean just like little neighbor, but with any neighbor you see. Like. And when are you speaking that truth? Well, you've got to be somewhere All near. All the time. Well, true, true. But you got to be somewhere near the neighbor that you're speaking the truth to in order to speak the truth to the neighbor. But when are you not near a neighbor or another person or another? Never. Because Christ is always with you and God's always watching everything and seeing so everything. Can, so. When I was saying that, and I do agree, um, and that doesn't even need to be um, uh, physically. I, I With my Quora ministry, I'm I'm near people all the time, and I don't even talk to some of them, um, but my writings do. But I, I, what I've noticed, um, at least in the apartment condo where we live, is everybody is very much an isolationist, um, which makes us isolationists, and we're not isolationists. Um, but... It's like, okay, I've got my little cubicle, leave me alone. And I think we're kind of, the world's getting more and more that way. Um, and so when I, when I was saying that, I was just reflecting kind of on that. And, you know, I, if a neighbor refuses to really have any contact with you, then you can't be with the neighbor because the neighbor won't be with you. And that's kind of the way the world, I think, uh, by and large, is going more and more. Maybe I'm wrong. That's well, been my experience. Really What's that? Neighbors really missing out. I'm missing something. Uh, she said the neighbor was missing out. <laughs> the neighbor's missing out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mark? I suppose that... Um, that indicates that there have to be, what would you say, ways in which um, I would say God ordained ways in which we can break ourselves and perhaps those around us out of this isol isolation and um, stay in my own space. And perhaps it could also mean that God may give us opportunity to take advantage of times when stuff like disaster strikes and people can't stay in their isolation and, and have a need. Very well put. Uh, Wayne? I, I was just going to say, in accordance, uh, in addition to what we do sometimes speak so loud that people can't hear what we say. Mm. In other words, the truth of the matter is actions speak louder than words sometimes. So I, I, I've I've actually struggled with that and was like, well, what do I do when I don't know my and, and maybe that maybe I'm the only one in the situation. I don't know. But what do you do when you your neighbor has not allowed you enough time to really get to know them that you know would minister to them? Other than prayer. Here's the thing. People are always watching. Mm -hmm. They're always watching. So a lot of times you don't have to say nothing to anybody. Sometimes by their life, by your lifestyle, you're speaking to them by your lifestyle. Fair enough. Fair enough. Any other thoughts? Yeah, I'm I'm also thinking uh, face to face communication. 
I don't think is totally gone. I think that, you know, that that is still there because we still are going to go into church and that kind of thing. But I think that we have also opened up the avenue of having a different way of communication uh, and you, and we can use it that that way. So I don't want to throw that away because that is a huge way in which we are communicating. True. True. All right. So is there any other win? Let's go to Hal. I thought I was going to say something. Uh, I totally agree with what Wayne and, and were saying there. Because mm -hmm. we, we agreed that to lie, you don't have to speak. You'd have to use your mouth. But to speak, you don't have to, again, you don't have to, like Wayne said, to speak the truth, you don't have to necessarily use your mouth. I totally agree with that. Like the act is the spirit in what things are done that reveals Jesus Christ, Christ revealed in you. That's, it's whether it's done talking or whether it's done through actions or through prayer or through stepping up out of the crowd for somebody else or there's a million examples in the Bible. Um, that therefore, it's like when Peter and John were preaching um, and everybody was astounded by Peter and John because Peter and John were uneducated below average ignorant men, according to the Bible. This is what they said they were. They were ignorant, uneducated people. So when they saw John and Peter preaching, they didn't see John and Peter. They saw Jesus Christ. And to the yeah. words of that effect, they said um, that they saw that they could just by seeing them they knew that these two men had been with Jesus of Galilee and then because Christ was revealed in them. So when they looked at Peter and John, they didn't, the onlookers didn't see, they didn't see Guy, they didn't see Wayne, they, did, they, did, they, didn't, they didn't see, um, they didn't see Mark, they didn't see Indiana, they didn't see Scarlett, they didn't see these people, they saw Christ revealed in them. And how can you deny the existence of Christ when you've seen him with your own eyes. Amen. So I want to spend a couple more minutes here going over the how, and then I forgot to hand the mic to my wife earlier on. So I want to uh, have her do a health nugget for us too. So, all right, what do we have for a how? I hear something in the back. Or... Yeah, got to get the mic. Um, would speak every man truth. Would that be a how? Okay, yeah. why would that be a how? Um, it'd be a how by putting away a lie. <laughs> no, it's a different how. No, it's not. Technically. I mean, it is. Oh, so now we're yeah. we're up to putting Family. away lying, speak every man truth as a how would, would you agree yeah yeah so it tells what is it if i carry a uh if i follow nothing but truth and i reject lying and that is uh in my own language and everything like that then what is happening inside as a process In renewed day by day. And as I'm renewed, what's, what, it, I'm going for one word with letter C, but you're absolutely right, Vicki. What, what is changing? What's being transformed? Character. Well, there you go. Exactly. Character. As I'm choosing to reject lying and putting on truth, my, I'm going through character transformation. Now, if I've just started doing that, um, you might find that I get it right 75% of the time. 
I might even get it right 90% of the time. But remember, this is a journey for each one of us. As we draw closer to the Father and Son of unconditional agape love, they draw closer to us. We start to realize, wait a minute, I don't have to do that. That's actually a detriment to me. I, I, ought, I ought to not lie. I, I, I ought to move closer to the truth. But when you first get started, you're, you're using training wheels. You, 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 you're not an expert. And when you're thinking about the concept of lying, not from a position of truth, but from a position of what seems logical, oftentimes, which is it that makes more sense, lying or truth? Which one in the flesh makes more sense? Lying. Lying. Absolutely. <laughs> lying makes more sense. But as we draw closer to Christ, as we put on the character of Christ, and as we see the character of Christ coming alive in us, suddenly our eyes are open to something we could not see before. Mm. So what I'm encouraging here, brothers and sisters, is if we are watching as somebody's going through that transition, don't slow them down because, uh, by pointing out that they haven't arrived. Encourage them for what they have accomplished. Any other how? Um, how we are members of one another. I, I, I'm kind of getting the idea that the entire verse again is a how uh, mm. at, at this point. Am, am I right about that? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Any other thoughts here on the how part of this verse? Every man. Uh, every man. Talk to me. Because when God created man, he made it that every man was possible of discerning the truth from lies. There's no man excluded from this. Every man is made with this in mind. Every man every, has been made. Every man but Judas. Yeah. No. Nope. nope, Judas. Judas especially. He made, it was a decision that he made. Every man has been given this, the ability to do this, but it's a decision, it's a choice that they've got to make. And there's no excuses because we were given freedom and in our freedom, we choose to exist or we choose not to exist. Absolutely. And we're moral creatures. We moralize. We even use that moralizing to decide, like you just said, it becomes a moral decision. What's better for me? To tell the truth or to lie. In able to in order to lie, we have to moralize what we're doing in the uh, in the first place. We had to have understood it was wrong before we could lie about it. Amen. I'm going to hand the phone, uh, the mic over to Irene. So can, she can, can I go say something real yes. quick? Yes, Vicky. I would also encourage you guys, because uh, I know that you all are, you know, have, have a church that you go to and that kind of thing. Some people, if, you know, in their past or whatever situation they were in, were forced to, they were actually in a situation, they were kind of forced to, that lying was safer than being truthful. Sure. So, you know, we are told to have compassion, but we have an opportunity within the body of Christ to be teachers and, and um, fellow brothers and sisters to be able to disciple, especially those coming into the church who are brand new and, and learning how to walk the walk for the Lord. Amen. Um, Amen. Mark? Yeah, the comment you just made reminded me of of a situation that I struggled with a little bit reading a book about some some people that were living during uh, Nazi Germany and during World War II 
and they had there been doing some underground work trying to help people that were Jewish and were um, being eliminated by the Nazi government. And as a result, they were getting their house searched and they believed very strongly that they should always be very much truthful. And they had their little girl standing there and the, the officer turns to the little girl and asks, where's your dad and your brothers? And she knew that her daddy and her brothers were underneath the table. And so she said, they're under the table. Her mama just about flipped out and, and without saying anything, you know, she thought, oh no, now she told them, you know, she didn't show it in, on her face, but they looked under the table. They didn't see the father and the brother because they were actually under the floor, under the table. <laughs> and so they thought that there was a mockery. And so even though she told the truth, it didn't end up backfiring on her. Um, and in another place in the same book, um, somebody told the officer something that was not truth, and that didn't end up backfiring either. And so sometimes, sometimes you look at those situations and say, I mean, I mean, I think of a biblical situation. We have jail inviting Sisera to come in, and um, she puts him to sleep and nails him to the floor. And um, you say, well, is that our way of doing it? Would God a bit of, of taking care of the situation like he did with that little girl? Would she tell the truth and still make it so that it turns out right? Um, we shouldn't underestimate the power of our God, but... I don't know. It's still it's still something I struggle with. Is there a situation in which the you don't have to share? You know, you understand what I mean? Sure. And within four minutes, I don't think I can answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think the, the, the any the, other the old, any other thoughts? And, go ahead. I think the I think the ultimate thing would be to no, we shouldn't lie ever. We should always speak the truth. Um, but there's that many examples in the Bible where people lied, but but they're on the journey. Was I mean, look at, um, what do you call it? Um, I can't think of his name now. Um, Israel, when he stole his brother's inheritance. He how far Jacob? He, he, yeah, Jacob, when he becomes Israel, doesn't he? He... Um, he, he stole his brother's inheritance and he lied and he lied and he lied. But he had to make up for that. He had to repent of it. He had to confess it and deal with it. Amen. All right, let's bring this to a close. Who would like to uh, close us in a word of prayer? Huh? Um, I do, do we still want to do Okay, we're going to go. So let's do this because I, I know Ron's going to break off at 3 o'clock exactly. So let's close the study, and then we'll have uh, a health nugget after that. Who would like to close this in a word of prayer? Patty, thank you for volunteering. Mm, yeah, thank you. Okay, I will. Awesome. Our kind Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your great love to mankind that you have worked out our salvation and please teach us how to cooperate completely with that and thank you for this time together learning together thank you lord that uh, your word is sure and we um, we can trust you and your word completely we just thank you for the security of the truth that you have preserved for us and made sure that at this time of Earth's history that we can have it and understand it. And we thank you and praise your holy and precious name. Amen. 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 For those that are able to hang on to the call, I'm going to hand the mic over to my wife now. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about oils. Some oils are good and some oils aren't so good for a person to use. 
So for example, uh, in one test, mayonnaise was used and in 15 minutes after they used mayonnaise, they put the eye under microscope and in 15 minutes, the capillaries were clogged. So the circulation can be interfered by oils. And yet there are oils that are very much needed. So like black oil from the cumin seed, it helps move the mold toxicities out of your body. Um, your brain needs certain oils, omegas and uh, that. So how the oil is processed, like olives are just squeezed, so they aren't usually heated if they're from a good source. Um, so there's different, different oils that are good. Uh, the avocado, uh, and then each oil has a different smoke point and you don't wanna heat that oil over the smoke point Otherwise, it will clog your port uh, vessels. So what do you do for salad dressing? Okay, here's one quick, easy, simple one. You got a can of olives, drain part of the juice off, put it in your blender, you got a fantastic salad dressing. Here's one that's a little more complicated. Uh, two and quarter cups water, a cup of raw cashews, a half a cup of frozen apple concentrate, a third cup of lemon juice, three fourths teaspoon of dill weed, one tablespoon salt, one teaspoon graduated onion, a half a cup of hot cooked millet. And you blend all that up. And then after it's all blended and you're ready, to serve it, put two tablespoons of chia seeds in it. So you got your omega-3s, you, you've got millet, which is fantastic in so many ways. Uh, there, there's a lot of good stuff in there. And I will post the, uh, the recipe out on the Facebook group, um, Ephesians Study, I believe is the name of the group. So. You can go out there and um, catch up with that. All right, y'all. Blessings and have a good week. We'll see you all next week. Blessings, brother. God love y'all. Love y'all. Peace. Peace out. See ya. <laughs>